Rivers. And if you find you're tuning into a wave, well then I don't know much about the NSA. Hello everybody. Hello friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 116. 116. What is our topic today? Th- this is the 16 personalities. Oh, what a quinky dink. I didn't plan that, I That's swear to you. That's kind of funny. I know, I didn't. Yeah, I just said it to you. I didn't notice it until you said it. Yeah, when we were putting the title on the episode and I was like, wait, this is 116 yeah. and this is... so." There you go. The universe works in mysterious ways. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Cool. Well, before we hop into that, do you have anything you want to share from last week or anything else? I do. I have stuff. Okay. I always have good stuff. So the first thing I wanted to share was a message that we got from a very sweet lady. Her name is Beatrice. She says, I am so glad I found your podcast. I have loved every single episode I have listened to. You and your hubby are very, you and your hubby are just amazing, very knowledgeable and genuine. I have been listening to your podcast for about a month. It showed up as a recommendation in Spotify. Since early 2020, I have been blessed with podcasts such as yours and enlightened empaths to be able to learn that I am not alone and that I am not weird or crazy has been a lifesaver. For years, I suffered depression, anxiety, and isolation. By listening to you, Danny, and other like-minded people, I feel like I have found a family. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. I have always loved animals, but listening to you, the connection is a lot stronger. Have a wonderful day. Well, thank you, Beatrice. Thank you, Beatrice. Oh, sweet. And here's something else that happened in this, is that Beatrice friend requested me, I want to say a couple of weeks ago, on Facebook, right? Okay. And when this happens and I don't have mutual friends, I don't know who it is. So I let it sit there for a while. Mm. And then I hope that the person's going to message me and and let me know, you know, hey, I'm Alyssa or or whatever. She didn't. I I deleted the friend request. And so I I apologize to her for that. That was, you know, but But it's understandable. Yeah. If you want if you're a listener and you want to be friends with me on Facebook, I'm totally cool with that. Just send me a message and let me know that you're a listener because I do get weird friend requests. And Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to turn anybody down but at the same time i have to scream you same know for me <laughs> yeah uh, same goes for me yeah exactly just send me so. a message and let yeah. me know yeah so anyway so anybody that i have denied your friend request please send it again and then message me <laughs> yes yeah same for me yeah and uh thanks so thank you beatrice for that thanks beatrice and then let's see what else i have um i did a reading for a listener i'm gonna i told her i would leave this anonymous and she said that she appreciated that so She is a listener, but I've also done several readings for her. Mm -hmm. And she came back to me with feedback for a reading that I did a while back, and I wanted to read it. Cool. Okay. She said, we had two sessions in the past, and this one is the third one. The first one was last year in August. I was in a long-distance relationship with one guy, and it was being toxic to me. That time you told me that I would be in a serious relationship with someone else next year at this time. And I was like... Although I believe that is what you see, I don't think it's possible in my head. This actually happened without me pushing for it and the type of guy you described. He seems like the type of person I would... So these are all the things that I told her that he would be like, and she's validating that these this is what he's like. Cool. He seemed like the type of person I would make friends with, but maybe not date. And I, and I seemed like that to him as well in the beginning, apparently. As I like more feminine guys and he loves more masculine girls, but we didn't know that at first. Hmm. Well, we found out about each other's true persona and we have been together for four months now and thinking about marriage. And I'm like, wow, what's happening? You told me that I need to be with a more chill person who would do things for me rather than what I could do for them. That is basically who he is. Also, he knows how to treat people right, like you said. He is American, like you said, not married, no kids, nerdy in a handsome way, and sensitive and expressive emotionally. This is how in-depth I get with my readings if you've mm-hmm. never had one for me. Right. I can All of this just kind of comes, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, she said, there is one thing that happened in a different way. You predicted that he might meet via work. He, we did not, but my work is one of the central things in the relationship. He wants to go with me wherever I go and wants to support me in my career. Nice. Uh, and he found me as you suggested. Thank you so much for your guidance every time. Wow. 
Isn't that great? Yeah. I love that kind of feedback. So if I've done readings for you, please feel free to share it because it helps me to know too that I'm analyzing what I'm getting right. I mean, what I'm anal- that I'm analyzing it right, right. You know. Yeah. So so yeah. Another so thank you. Customer. Yes, thank you, my anonymous friend. Good job. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. And then as we do, we answer two questions every week. Yep. So let's see these questions. I haven't shared these with you yet, so these are fresh to you. I wish we had like a music cue for this part, like, you know. (laughs) Right? Dun, 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 dun. No. No. I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah, we need like a sound man, but there is no more room in our little tiny studio right now. But this isn't forever. Yeah, which which is a reminder that if you hear snoring, it is the giant dogs. Yeah, they're much closer now. Much closer, smaller room. Anyways, okay, so first (laughs) question is, why is obtaining happiness so hard? And Jennifer asked that. Hmm. You know what? I think that happiness isn't hard to obtain. Right. It's hard for us to accept happiness because I think for whatever reason, we're programmed to believe that mm-hmm. what is happiness? Mm-hmm. What does that actually mean? You know, what are the things that will make us, us happy? Um, we can obtain those things mm-hmm. that, but in order to obtain that level of happiness, you have to be willing to work hard for yourself, for your family, right. you know, in, in changing things about yourself that can make you obtain that happiness. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it, it is hard, but nothing in this life is supposed to be easy. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. If it, I've said this before, if it was easy, it would be heaven. Yeah. Here, this is the school and school's not easy at all. No, not, not always. That's for sure. Yeah. So obtaining happiness can be, it can be achieved. It can be easy. It just depends on how you look at this schooling. If you want to kind of slack off and, you know, not apply yourself to it, then it's going to be harder. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be harder to achieve. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, I want to be happy and I know that this is what it's going to take for me to be happy, mm-hmm. I'm going to obtain this, then you will be absolutely will be happy. The harder you work right. in the right direction, the happier you'll be. Yeah. And it's not about money and it's not about, you yeah. know, I don't know. It, it's about what you find in yourself. You know, happiness yeah. is within you. I, I agree. Well, you pointed on something for me that kind of jumped out of that, um, your explanation, and that was the perception of it. Yes. So what is, starting with, what is your perception of happiness? Are you comparing your neighbor's house to yours? The color of the paint, the white picket fence, the weeds, the flowers, the chip paint, you know, right. if, if you're doing that, it's going to be harder yes. to obtain happiness. Absolutely. If your perception of happiness is what truly makes you happy, not what you think your friends are going to get off seeing on Facebook right. or Instagram or, you know, messages and things you can share with right. them. That's great. To share with your friends. Don't get me wrong. But if you're doing that to boost your serotonin, yeah. you know what I mean? And get yourself a little high on that, then that may mess with your perception of what really happiness is. Absolutely, too. And it's also about exposure to, you know, things that make you happy and things that bring you down. If you're mm-hmm. constantly exposing yourself yes. to negative energy, yes. then that's what's going to happen. Yes. I, I've been meaning to bring this up about TikTok because for a while I was doing a lot of TikToks and like, like many readings on there and stuff. And I decided to stop. And I stopped because I feel like of all of the social media platforms, that's the one you're most likely to be bullied on. And I just won't have it. I just can't, I can't allow my, to expose myself to that. And that's what happens. It just, as if you get bigger on TikTok, you are just confronted with so much bullying on there. And it's like, why? Mm -hmm. And that brings people's happiness down. You know, they're trying to do something cool for their life and be on TikTok and help others. And people just go on and knock them down. And it's like, that comes back to, to, you know, saying, I see it all the time. You do you. Mm-hmm. You just do you, and right. if it doesn't, you know, affect you, just roll on by, right. you know. And and if you can learn to do that, happiness absolutely mm-hmm. can come to you. A lot of us through maturity learn that those kind of behaviors are wrong. Yeah, you know, like towards our fellow man, mm-hmm. um, and then we start to work off that karma before we even go. Yes, some of us don't, and then we have to pay that back the next time around. Right. So 
it, there's plenty of happiness, just like success and money to go around. It's all floating out there. Mm-hmm. It's what you want to tap into. Exactly. So there's plenty of negative and sadness and anger and violence, but there's also plenty of happiness and love and compassion and understanding yes. out there. Yes. Who you surround yourself with and the energy you tap into is going to A, determine your level of happiness. Right. But you got to start, I think, with what is your perception and I had wrong ideas for a long time about what happiness was. Me too. For me. Mm-hmm. And I've grown. I've changed. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. You too. So yeah. we find that different things bring us enjoyment maybe in the past that didn't. Exactly. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But. Yep. So I, I hope. What was the it question, was, question that why is obtaining happiness so hard? But who asked? That is Jennifer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jennifer. Well, so that's how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. So we appreciate yeah. the question. But it is obtainable. It, oh, yeah. it, it is just like anything else in life. It's it's hard. You have to put the work into it. But if you do, you can obtain it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, so hope that answers your question. Yes. And then the next one is from Lucy. She said, who are your role models or mentors? <laughs> That's a good question. I like it. Wow. Um, okay, so as far as somebody that I know as like a mentor was my grandfather, Bob, he actually wasn't my real biological grandfather. He was my step-grandfather, but never once in his entire life made me feel that he was anything less than my grandfather. He's right. really the reason that I am who I am today. So he is like my number one role model, even from the other side now, I would say. Um, I kind of ask myself a lot, what would Bob do? That's, you know. Right. Um, and my mom, of course, and, you know, the rest of my spirit team. But my grandfather really is number one. And then um, Walt Disney is a number is my other one, probably, because I like to go back to the things that he had to challenge himself and conquer to do what he did and make the success that he did. And, like, I can't remember how many times he failed and how many times people said no to him, but he just kept going. Right. So he's, um, yeah, he's a mentor to me, too, right. I would say. And what about you? Wow, that's a tough one. Well, I'd say a mentor um, would probably be my dad, for sure. Um, even though, you know, f- as a teenager, we we battle with our parents. and But as I've grown and, and we've both grown, we've become close. So I actually talk to him about a lot of things yeah. and, and get his advice about things. And um, I listen to him. Yeah. I, I enjoy his company now. It's cool. You know, I really, and this has been going on for years, but yeah, it, um, there was definitely a time in our lives where I didn't feel that way. Sure. And now I do. You know, I feel like he's definitely a mentor to me. Yeah. Um, on a lot of levels, as far as just, you know, he's laid back, but he knows how to get the business and you know, and and be forward, but can still laugh and have a good time. And yeah. So that part I appreciate. Um, my men, my role models. Um, if you will. I don't know. I guess they would be more musical yeah, um, or art, but yeah. I would say, I mean, I love a lot of music and a lot of different artists, but I think Hendrix for me is probably up there in the top. Some people don't get him. Um, I just love that freedom of expression where it could go from, you know, zero to 60 in right. a matter of seconds or from one song to another. And it, it captured so many different things from Motown to blues to psychedelic you yeah. know, kind of stuff. So yeah, just sure. that freedom of expression and his bold use of color. Yeah. I just loved his color. Yeah, you his know? color comes are He amazing. always, what mm-hmm. he wore, his albums, it just was great. Yep. So that's it. Yay. Thanks for the question. Thank you for the question, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. And then just two other quick things. Um, I want to say that I am going to start doing medium circles again. So if there's anybody that's like in the Ventura County or even like in parts of L.A. County that are close to us that would like to schedule a medium circle. Basically, what I do is I'll come out to like your home or your yoga studio or whatever, and you can get like 10 of your closest friends together. And we just channel the other side and I answer questions for you. Yeah. And it's lots of fun. So I'm doing those again. So if you're interested, message me. It's killer. She is, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. It's been a while because of Corona. Yeah. You know, well, it's time to get back. Yes. And then the other thing I want to talk about in case our listeners didn't hear it at the end of last week's show is that Gypsy Brown has their first show scheduled. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do. October 1st. Yes, October 1st uh, at the Canyon Club in Agoura Hills, California. Um, And doors open at 6. I believe we go on at 7. 
and we're opening for classic rock legends, The Tubes. Yay! So I believe they go on, I don't know, maybe nine or something. Nice. So It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. Very excited. Can't we're wait. all very excited. We're all very excited. Yeah. Everybody. So. Yay. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Yay. <laughs> all right. We're ready for episode 116 then. 116. The 16 personalities. So this just like randomly came to me last week. I thought, you know, we talk a lot about like human nature and, you know, not falling into what society wants. But I think one thing that we kind of forget is that we are all very, very different. And there are 16 different personalities that they say that we can fall under. But at the same time, those 16 personalities are still very unique. And of course, we have our own personality traits. But I think that doing this episode... My goal with it is to help people understand that you're not going to meet a bunch of yous out there. Do you know what I mean? You're going to come in contact with all kinds of people that are going to think different ways than you and and not because they're like, I don't know, they're not a good person or whatever, but because they just think differently than you. Mm -hmm. They have different ways of looking at things. And so it's hard for us sometimes to be like, well, I don't understand why this person thinks this way or why they say this or why they do that. Well, it's because they have a different personality type yeah. than you do. And I you myself know, forget that yeah. often sometimes. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. They don't see it through my eyes. <laughs> I really wouldn't want to right. know a bunch of carbon copies of myself. The that world would be would boring. Be boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and now that I'm getting older, I I have this need to like, I don't want to say psychoanalyze, but I actually really enjoy picking apart people's personalities and seeing just how different we all are and mm. why we are that way and how much of it stems back to our childhoods, you mm. know? So, so anyways, so this episode is about personalities and um, the different ones and yeah. Cool. So let's see. First of all, our personalities are just like one one of the factors that drive and guide our behaviors. However, it is key, a key factor in understanding who we are as individuals. Our looks are, are similar. They're very unique. There's no two people that look exactly alike. Even twins, the mm -hmm. identical twins, are not, you know, identical. No. It's the same with personalities. They're all very unique. So this can make understanding some people very difficult. This is kind of what I was saying before. Right. Um, but if we can somehow see that this is normal, then we can start to understand each other better and form better relationships. Mm -hmm. In the early 20th century, Carl, I don't know how to say this, and I should have looked it up if it's Jung or Jung. It's J-U-N-G, but either way, we'll just call him Carl Jung. Okay. He, uh, he's a very influential uh, psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, and he developed this theory designed to categorize people based on their personality types. He published a book about it uh, in 1921. And so this is when this whole kind of thing opened up about the 16 personality types. Each type of personality is broken down into four categories. You have the first one is introvert or extrovert. The second one is sensing or intuition. The third one is thinking or feeling. And the fourth one is judging or perception. And if you do these online, sometimes you'll see like that the like the words fluctuate a little bit, but they all stand for the same thing. So they all break down to, you know, it's either... I or E, S or N, T or F, J or P is mm -hmm. what you're looking for there. Right. Um, I did. I asked our listeners what to take a to take a quiz. Um, and this quiz you can go and take it online. It's sixteenpersonalities.com, and in there they ask you a bunch of questions to try and figure out what your personality type is. Right. Uh, it's you know just random stuff like what do you enjoy this or that. Right. You know which which appeals to you more this or that. And from that, they can kind of get a sense of, of, you know, your personalities. So I asked our listeners to do this. And um, so we'll go over like the most common types and whatever. But cool. um, let's start first with introvert versus extrovert. We did have a listener that was really interested in finding out more about this. So I hope that this covers his questions um, as far as introvert versus extrovert. In this quiz, both of us took this, and you are 57% extrovert, mm -hmm. and I am 82% introvert. <laughs> I actually took this during, we all took it, you, me, and Marina, we took this during quarantine, mm -hmm. and I got 100% introvert. And I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I should work on that. You know, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but right. I don't want to be 100% introvert. I want to be, you know, more, right. yeah extrovert a little bit extroverted so i'm glad that this time it came up 82 percent mm -hmm. <laughs> um anyways so let's talk a little bit about the differences 
Introverts focus more on the inner world and extroverts focus on the outer world. Extroverts are gener- are energized by interacting with others, while introverts prefer privacy and value self-reflection. And they get their motivation from, from that self-reflection. Um, our batteries are drained quickly as an introvert. When they are with other people, even when enjoying their company, it drains the batteries. Mm-hmm. Um, the fewer people, the better for the introverts. It is. It can be harder to meet new people the more of an introvert you are. Um, you work best environments where you can work alone or have control over the interactions. Like being out, like um, you worked in the grocery industry for a long time. Mm-hmm. There's no way I could have done that. Way too much human interaction. I would be drained. Yeah. It's just way, way, way too too outgoing for mm-hmm. the introverts. Um, so if you're an, if you're an introvert and you have a job where you interact a lot with the public, you could see how that would be probably more draining than if you worked by yourself or, yeah. or at home or whatever. And so in those kind of situations, if you're an introvert, you have to make sure that you take the time to re-energize yourself, whatever yeah. that may be. And sometimes I think that feels selfish yeah. to a lot of introverts, but it's not. It's no. important. Yeah. You know, I feel it sometimes when, when I need it. And it's not like you and I spend so much time together. So I know that you don't take it personally when I'm like, I just need to like go for a ride and like reset my my introvert clock, you know, because sometimes you just do. You just need to like have a few minutes to just breathe by yourself. And it's not about anybody else, but the fact that you're an introvert and that people suck your energy. Right. You know, it's it's just how it goes. Uh, let's see what else about introverts, um, may not enjoy impromptu social activities and easily becomes overstimulated. Extroverts tend to act first, reflect later. They work best in in fast paced environments and they can miss this situation when not around it. They are more open and accessible and like to talk. They make new friends easily. They usually have large circles of acquaintances and are interested in what's going on around them. One of the biggest differences of you and I, and we talked about this recently, is that you are more of a, you know what's going on around us when we're out. Mm -hmm. You are scanning the room. You know who's there. I don't know anything. (laughs) Why don't I know anything? Because I don't really want to make eye contact with anybody. (laughs) And, And please know that I'm not a bitch. That has nothing to do with it. I am just really, really shy. And when you get like, you're like, wait, what? You're shy? Come on. You do this show and you're, you know, open and talking. But it's just a microphone. Somebody, yeah, it's different. You're the only one in this room, so it's just like talking to you. That's why I see this mug all day. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said if there's a camera in here, I would never know. I would be sitting here like, (laughs) uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I think if it was off in a corner, kind of filming, you'd forget after a while. I probably would. The beginning would be a little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. It would be, yeah. It's, it, you know, all these things, you can get used to them. But, sure. But, yeah, when we go out, you will be like, did you see that over there? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> no, I didn't because I wasn't looking. Yeah. Um, I do love to people watch, though. That yeah. is a lot of fun. Okay, so let's move on to sensing versus intuition. Um, on some of these tests, you might see sensing as observant. But it, you know, in this quiz, it's the S. It stands for sensing. So you and I on ours... I got 84% intuitive and you got 63% sensing. Uh, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Well, mine came up intuitive. I no, thought. yours came up intuitive. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yours was also intuitive. Okay, you. Mm-hmm. I was 84 and you were 63. That's right. I was like, mm-hmm. no, that's not right because we have two that are the same. Right. Okay, so if you are a sensor, you pay attention to the raw data that you can see, hear, and touch. You rely heavily on past experiences to guide your behavior you live in the here and now. You are detail oriented, usually follow step by step instructions and value realism t- and common sense. So you can kind of see on these where why the percentages come into play. Yeah. Because, you know, you're I do rely on some of that. You do rely on some. Yes. But like absolutely. the intuitive part has grown probably more. Yes, I wasn't over sure. Over the last few years. Yes, I when you took this, I wasn't sure how it was going to come up for you because I thought, well, he definitely does use his, his intuitive mind more now. So, yeah, I wasn't surprised to see that. And right. 63% is, you know, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Intuitive types pay attention to instinct and their intuition and their ability to draw meaning from what may seem like disconnected facts. They are good at reading between the lines and recognizing connections between random things. Mm -hmm. They are interested in unusual things. They focus more on theory, value imagination, enjoy learning. They worry about the future more than the present and plan to change the world rather than just live in it. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yes. Let's see. Thinking versus feeling. So for this one, we also both got the same thing. I got 73% feeling and you got 64% feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, thinkers make decisions based on facts and objective criteria as well as logic to solve problems. They like very clear rules. They mm -hmm. are motivated by achievement. They like work. They require order. They get frustrated by the people part of life because they put rules and logic over people and feelings. Mm -hmm. They can be blunt and very business like truth over fact, Tr truth over tact. Sorry. Right. And then for feeling, we have decision based on personal values and social considerations. They pay attention to their own moral compass. They're less interested in cold, hard facts motivated by their desire to understand and help people they choose work they choose work based on what's important to them empathetic harmonious tactful considerate of others uh, and they consider their effects of their act the effects of their actions on others but i think that i agree with that yeah i think that all of these <clears throat> that you know i've read are are very accurate um at least for me mm -hmm. So, and I, yeah. I can see even with that one, I, you know, I can be that more of a thinker, but I tend to bend a little bit more. I've even been told that I wear my heart on my sleeve. Right. So as much as I like structure and guidelines and rules and order and tidiness, right. I still go a lot with my feelings. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you are definitely a feeler. So yeah. I wasn't surprised with that one. Um, and then the last one is judging versus perceiving. And we got these different. I got 65% perceiving and you got 68% judging. So we're like on two, totally yeah. the opposite ends of the spectrum on Don't this Don't judge. One. <laughs> right. And I tell you that all the time. Like, will you please, you know. <laughs> but you know what? Everybody's different. That's the thing. And this is a great key in point is that sometimes those little <laughs> things about you that fall under this category right. may drive me insane. But then I have to stop there and go, that's him. That's what he does, and that's who he is. And so you just have to accept that people have different personalities. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn to accept that, then that helps in your human relationships. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the judging types approach life in a structured, organized, and calibrated way. They're self-disciplined and decisive, work first, play later. They take responsibilities and deadlines very seriously. They can come across as domineering and inflexible, but it's part of their need for structured settings. Perceiving types are spontaneous, prefer to keep options open, perceive structure as limiting, and seek flexibility in their lives. They view deadlines as elastic and are more often than not procrastinators. Relaxed and adaptable, they enjoy life now and work later. They can come across as unreliable or flaky, but most likely because they like to keep their options open. That goes along with my introverted side. Yeah. I'm not flaky, I'm just shy. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I think that uh, that fits me. And I, yeah. I don't know. I, for you, like I'm reading this and I'm like, that doesn't really fit you as much as the perceiving. But you took the quiz. so. But there's also pages and pages and pages of I wasn't really listening to that part. I was thinking about the previous one. Oh, so wait. I didn't hear what the judge part was. That's a bad host. I know. I'm sorry. I got, <laughs> I got sidetracked in the mind. You're like, oh, look. Look at that thought over there. But for the most part, everything you've read so far, yeah. I agree with. Yeah. And we've already read it before, so I just didn't hear it this time. Yeah, we have. <laughs> but if you go on 16personalities.com and you take this, it really goes into much more explanation Yeah, it's not like, this. do you prefer red or green? It's not like that. No, 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 not at all. Uh, I'm going to read you some of the most um, common and uncommon types when, you know, we put these personality types and these letters together. Mm -hmm. But you, there are 16, so I'm not going to sit here and read all 16. Okay. So you can go online and, and look if you, you know, want more information on right. these. Um so let's see. 
Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is one of the most rare. It's INTF, so that would be introvert. Okay, see, this is where I need to go back. Introvert sensing. Sorry, thinking. I should have written this down. And judging. Okay. So if this is you, you're considered an architect. This is a rare personality type. Um, They're dreamers. They are very bold, bookworms, confident in their ability to master any topic. Somebody, a celebrity that fits into this would be Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. He is in this category. ISFJ. This is the defender. So like each one has, you know, a character to it almost. Mm -hmm. So when you go on and take this, you'll see that. Um, these I took also because our listeners screenshotted, they screenshotted what they, their quiz came back as. And so I took like the most common ones from them too, so that they know what they're saying. I'm sure they already read it. Um, anyways, ISFJ is, uh, the defender, very dedicated and warm, a protector. 13% of the population is this, uh, ISFJ. And they are found a lot of times in medicine, social work, and academics, and they can be perfectionists. Queen Elizabeth is one of these. Hmm. This one is what I am. It's an INFP, which is a mediator. Uh, Kind, quiet, passionate, happily... uh, I can't even read my own writing. Oh, happily lose themselves in daydreams. Can have profound emotional responses to music, art, nature, and people. Empathetic. And I thought this was funny. The top one on the list was Shakespeare. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm like Shakespeare. No, I joke. <laughs> uh, this one is yours, ENFS. This is a protagonist. Strive to have a positive impact impact on other people and the world. Born leaders and problem solvers. And the two celebrities that came up for you were Obama and Oprah. Nice. Yeah, isn't that awesome? My people. (laughs) I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, So, okay. And then let's see. Another popular one with our listeners was ENTJ. And this is a commander. And they are bold, imaginative, strong-willed, and always find a way. They are born leaders. And then the last one that I wrote down, um, this Marina is this one, INFJ. And this is one of the most uncommon ones. I actually used to be mm. this, and then my, my J became a P, so I don't mm. know. Um, so hers, yeah, this is hers. Um, it is the counselor, creative nurturer with strong sense of personal integrity and drive to help others. They uh, realize their potential and talents for helping others. So those are some of the ones that were popular with with our listeners that those came up. So I I know that the listeners enjoyed this one. I I could tell they were all into it. So I hope that you got some good information out of taking it. But this is what we do in the discussion group, too. So, like, if, you know, you're curious, this they went and took the quiz for me and then came back and, and screenshotted it so that we could see, you know, what's the most common and everything. So a lot of people got the same one that I did, the mediator. I don't hmm. think I saw anybody, which is interesting. I don't think I saw anybody that had the same as you. But if you think about it, because a lot of our listeners are spiritual, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that a lot of them got mediator like I did. Because right. I think that that is, has, you know, you're using your intuition, <clears throat> you're, you're more of an introvert. Right. Um, so we did, we had a listener question about this episode and it was can you switch personality types and i think that i answered that a little bit ago because i used to come up infj Mm -hmm. and now i come up infp and i think that the reason why that has happened is because um i have gone through this spiritual awakening you know and so a lot has changed within me and now i perceive things very differently and so i think that that's changed in me um i think too like for me at least, in parts of my life, I would have considered myself an extrovert. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I guess for a while I told people I was an introverted extrovert or vice mm-hmm. versa. Because right. I do when I'm around people that I that I click with or, you know, like you sometimes can't get me to shut up, you mm-hmm. know. But it is hard for me around new people that maybe I don't, you know, feel that with that it's hard for me to open up. Um, But I do like to be around people when I feel comfortable. I think that's a huge part of it. You know, you you have to feel comfortable. I think any time we work on ourselves, we change. So, yeah, I think that 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 test or your scores or whatever could possibly come up different throughout years of just maturing and changing as a as an individual, you know. 
that's a good point. Really, that is. And, and it's interesting, like maybe in 20 years, we'll take this again and see mm -hmm. if it changed and how it did change. Because, you, yeah, there are a lot of things in you that change when you right. get older and you see things differently and, you know, life experience happens and mm -hmm. that changes it. So um, this question that can you switch personality types? Absolutely. I believe that you can. What I think in this whole big picture of it for me, that's sort of... Um just kind of mind blowing is that so when we leave this world and we cross to the other side, <clears throat> we don't take our body. Right. But we take our conscience and we take our personality. Yes, we do. It is all relative to our soul. Yes. So it's kind of cool to think that I'm going to be there floating around feeling like I'm me. Right. Totally. But I just won't have any arm or pain or, you know, no legs, no arms, no back pain. It will just be my memory mm -hmm. and my personality. Absolutely. And, you know, that that's one of the things with the other side and with spirits is that they um, they tend to show me those little descriptive things about their personality that helps so that I know that I'm connected to mm -hmm. them. And sometimes those things about their personalities may not be all that great. And they'll show them to me anyways, just because they're showing this is who I was when I was a human. But those good things about ourselves, we absolutely, we take those with us. And those, from what I've read and kind of what I feel too, those things, they stick with us in every life. That's who we are. Those right. things about us aren't going to change, you know, like... Um, people say, you know, people don't change. Well, there are things about you that will probably never change, but they're not, right. not, they're not the things that people think about, you know, like it's probably a blessing. You don't remember yeah. life to life as you're living them because you still feel like you. Right. But if you were to look in the mirror in the next life and go, Oh my God, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not blonde. Yeah, totally. You know, I'm not female. Yeah. It would really mess you up. Totally. So you don't remember all that. No. But you still feel like you. Yeah. You st you don't have the conscious memory of past lives yeah. until you go to the other side and review them. Thankfully. Thankfully. Yeah. But you still feel like you. Exactly. And you're, you're still, still going to have like the you. same personality yep. going into the next one. Right. With the same and similar types of challenges. And lessons, and it's up to you and your personality to figure out how to learn those lessons. Yep, absolutely. I, I trip on that whole idea. It's like, it'll be me, but just yeah. in a different body, you I, know? I go back to, like, my earliest thoughts of what heaven was like, and I guess, like, thinking about that besides, like, you know, sitting on a cloud playing a harp or whatever mm -hmm. is maybe personality list and I, I don't know if this makes sense but follow me for a second here is that maybe we were all the same because you know we're in this place and so there's been movies like this where everybody just kind of has the same personality and there's not a lot of uniqueness mm -hmm. you know and I've come to realize that's not what it's like at all. Like, we no. still have that uniqueness. My mother is still very sarcastic with me. Mm -hmm. and that's her personality. It's not right. because she's she's mean. She's just, right. you know, that's her personality. Um, and it's probably will be her personality in the next life. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I don't think, like, if you're violent and angry in this life, you're not going to be different. violent and angry there. Those are, those are bad traits. Right. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. have the body to do this with. Right. You have a mind. And you have a personality that might be a little on the uptight side. Yeah. But that's your personality. And right. that's where you have to learn in or these lessons because mm -hmm. you can change. Yes. You can change your personality. I'm pretty convinced of that. Yes. I don't think by any means I'm the same person I was at five years old, at 10 years old, at 20 years old, or even at 40 years old. One thing that's been cool while we've been doing this podcast now for like two and a half years is that now I start to get messages from the other side while we're talking, telling me what they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And and you were kind of talking about how you can change your personality. And it is that what I was hearing is it's very important that in this life you do whatever you need to be to be. To be you, mm -hmm. to be authentically you. Right. Um, one of our listeners, Shauna, she had asked after she took this quiz, she got the same thing I did. She said, is this good? Well, there's no right or wrong. There's no, no good or bad because this no. is who you are. This right. is, you know, so when 
you know, you're, you're like, there's something inside of me that tells me that I'm this person, but society tells me that I'm not supposed to be this person. Mm -hmm. The other side, the universe, they want you to go with who you are. Right. They want you to be you and show your true personality. Right. So, you know, yeah, your personality type can change, right. you know, because you need to be authentically you. And if you're an extrovert, great. If you're an introvert, great. Right. Just authentically stick with whatever you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to want to be somebody else. You know, you when you took the quiz, um, you told me that you felt like a couple of the answers. You were like, well, maybe I should say this other thing, you know. Um, and I think we all do that mm -hmm. when we have these types of quiz. We're like, well, what is the right answer? Right. But there is no right answer. The right answer is the one that stands to you and goes, that's more right. me. Because you're not looking to get a certain thing. You don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get something that says extrovert in it because right. I'm not an extrovert. You know? Almost every one of those questions, uh, I immediately thought of what I would score it because mm -hmm. it goes from agree to disagree anywhere from there's a scale in there. Right. Almost every, no, not almost every one. It was immediately I, I heard what I'm supposed to score it. Right. When I want to th rethink it, then I'm probably not being totally honest. Right. With myself. This also goes with personality and the ability to change. And that is we all have this inner voice and that inner voice is your help from the other side, whether it be it you or your loved ones helping you. And we all have parts of our personality that maybe we want to work on. Yeah. Or we hear we should work on that. Yeah, for sure. So, yes, be happy with who you are and strive to be authentically you. Yeah. But if you hear that inner voice, listen to it. Well, yeah. You know, try to make a, um, try to make a small change to see if you're able to do that. Right. No, you should absolutely, like, when I say authentically be you, I don't mean, like, keep those negative traits that no. you've learned your whole life. Right. Um, change, but change because you want to be that person. Not be because you're comparing yourself to your neighbor. Exactly. Right. You know, if you love this spiritual life, then go towards it. Mm -hmm. Don't let people discourage you because that's not the way they live their lives. Because as you can see, we all fall into very different categories here with our personalities and people are not always going to understand <laughs> you and they're not going to, you know, want you to act one way. People want you to act another way. And it's like, why this isn't your life, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just have to be you mm -hmm. and figure your personality out what you want it to be, what you, the type of person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and your neighbor may not want to be that type of person. They may want to be somebody different. And that's that's the way it should be. That There's nothing wrong with that. Right. So we need to work more on changing ourselves than changing others. I would love to know more about the process of each one of our souls and how we are created before we come here. Like what makes our personalities? Uh -huh. Like who's determining this? I mean, right. I'm the creator, but... Is it just like, you know, Beppe de Pucco over there in the big chef's hat going, oh, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and a this, and a that, and a this, you know, or, you know, I'm trying to be playful There's here. memes like that. It's funny. You know, but um, I, I ponder that sometimes. Like, I, yeah. But I, I don't believe it's that playful. I believe it's much more well thought out. Yeah. Um, but there's so many of us and so many of us that are alike, but even within these categories of people that score the same as you or fall under the same category as you, you're still very different than them. Yes. Yes. We're each one unique. Yes. We're able to adapt and change and grow. Right. That's our challenge here at this school on Mother Earth. Yes. So I'm going to throw a theory at you about okay. like the answer to this question. Okay, so let's just say that when you're a new soul, you don't have a lot of those personality traits. You're learning who you are because you're a new soul, right? So, you know. Well, what if you're not a new soul? What if you well, I mean, everybody in was this a, life in, no, right. in the beginning of your life? Everybody at one time or another was a new soul. Yes. That's just how that worked. Everybody was yes. new. So what if when we're a new soul, we're not <clears throat> given a whole lot except the necessities gotcha. we're meant to build on who we are based on right. what we want and what that soul is about. So with each additional life, we learn more and more about who we are. And this is kind of cool because if this is all true, what I'm hearing here, 
then things like your spiritualism should roll over into your next life because that's who your personality is. So basically what they're saying kind of I feel like is the personality that you choose in this life is almost like what you will be working on and starting with in the next life Mm -hmm. and then adding on to it. So that makes a lot of sense, which is because, you know, the more evolved souls, the the older the soul, the more evolved you are. Right. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I could see with many lives, you sort of start to change. Right. But I guess that would make a lot of sense that there isn't really somebody throwing in ingredients. It's more like, here's your kit. Right. Now go out there and make yourself. Yes. This is something that I don't know that I've asked the other side before. And so what you listeners, what our listeners just witnessed was what happens when we ask these questions Mm -hmm. and how they can tell me. And I have to process this and analyze it and go, a lot of times I'm like, whoa, how come I never thought about that? How come I, and that's when I know that it's them and not me is when I'm like, I didn't know that. I just feel like somebody just told me this piece of information that like totally blew me away. That's how I know it's a message. I just have like this meeting of like being at a convention and everybody's in line to get their starter kit and they like (laughs) smack you on the bum, like go get him slugger. (laughs) Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to your first life. Not get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that first <laughs> life is probably work. brutal, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because you're brand new. Yeah. And, yeah. It's funny because there's people that I've felt like in my life, in this life, that I've come across that are newer souls that have actually been confirmed Yeah. by your mom that are newer. Yes. And you can see it almost sometimes. Yes. It's like this... Um, like a baby throwing a fit sometimes, if that was an analogy. Yes, but, you can tell. And yeah. and there's a lot of times I know in my life that I've come across people that I'm like, this is an old soul. Mm-hmm. And you don't even a lot of times know why you're saying that. You just like feel that in you right. that this person's been around. Like mm-hmm. Marina's an old soul. She's oh, 16 yeah. years old, but she's not. You know what she's I mean? She's been here many times. Many times. And that's something that I would have said about her long before I found out about my abilities. Yeah. You know, even when I don't didn't even know what the hell that <clears> meant, I still you could feel that so you know and like you said you can feel it with a newer soul too yeah. and i think you know that i really feel like all the souls were created at once mm-hmm. but we just decide when we want to come here or you know how long we want to stay there for and so the newer souls they kind of just hang out over there right. and do whatever it is they want to do yep. you know so i agree so anyway so we all have very different personalities is we the do. point of this episode and we should all learn to use those personalities to understand each other more and be authentically us and allow others more importantly, maybe not more importantly, but just as important, let others be who they are. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if we were all the same carbon copy, it would be either very volatile or very boring. It would be, yeah. And it's already volatile enough. So here, but it would be extremely boring. Yeah, it would be very boring. um, I, being more of an extrovert, I love different personalities. Yeah. I love meeting people that are just have different personalities. Some I click with, some I don't. But I would much prefer a group activity than a solitary activity. Yeah. That's my kind of vibe in life. Yeah. I get off on others' energy. Right. Yeah. For me, because I'm an introvert, like if the (laughs) energy is good, I can feed off of it. But there does come a point where I'm like, I can't do it anymore. It's yeah, like my a battery room full dies. of downers wouldn't be good. Oh, no, not. Yeah. But even a room full of people that are, are happy Chew and up, stuff, yeah. it does. It totally drains the battery. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to recharge. That's important with introverts is right. that we have that recharging time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. But so important, you know, to embrace, like you said, to embrace ourselves for who we are at this point in our journey. Yeah. Right? Like, let's let's never say never. That's my motto. <laughs> it's like, who am I at this point in my journey? Am yes. I, do I feel like I'm getting better? Like I'm heading towards the light? Or right. am I regressing and headed down that dark tunnel? Right. So the more that I can kind of introspectively look at myself that way, the better that I can accept others. That's exactly you right. Know? And I, that's the goal is I really want to just be able, when all said and done this in this life, is just be like, man, every single person I came across, whether it was a great experience or not, I appreciate that I had that experience. Yes, absolutely. 
our listeners, especially if you've been listening from the beginning, you've kind of heard how my abilities and, and Danny's as well have evolved through this process. And at the very beginning, I felt like I didn't want to read people like just people that I knew, you know, when I was around them or in the room with them. I didn't want to, people to think I was snooping on who they were. Mm-hmm. And now, unfortunately, it automatically happens when I see a picture or meet somebody that things start coming to me. However, it is a really good thing. It's not a bad thing. I don't get, like, personal no, private information. Yeah. The reason why it's good is because it's teaching me to understand people better. It's teaching me to understand that individual person better as well, why they do the things they do, why they act the way that they act, so that I know that the way that they act has nothing to do with me or anybody else for that matter. It's it's this weird kind of like, whoa, that's why they are the way that they are, you know? Um, it, it's, you know, it, it's kind of wild, but it's not like snooping. You know, I used to think that that's what it was. It just, this helps you when you become more intuitive it helps you understand people more. And that's really cool, you know, because everybody is different. And and even like, you know, I work with a lot of women that have, you know, issues in their marriages or whatever. And sometimes I'll end up talking to both the husband and the wife. And I can tell you that you can't get the the man's energy and what he's really thinking completely unless you talk to him as well, you know? So you're only getting like one side of it and then you can put the puzzle together. You know, it's kind of wild the way that this works, but, but using your intuition to really kind of understand people better and see why they are the way that they are, you know, it it helps to understand people and, Mm -hmm. and humankind better. And, you know, that's pretty much, It's pretty much the gist of all of this is relationships Mm -hmm. and people because the other side is a different dimension that requires nothing material. Yet there's relationships on the other side. The only difference between the other side and here is that we have material. Mm -hmm. That's not the only difference, but yeah, it's a big difference. Uh, We have emotions that don't span there, but essentially... We are in the physical here. Yeah, there's no physical there. But we're still having to face one another. Yep. Each other's personalities, our own personality, ourselves every time we look in a mirror. Right. So this is essentially the lessons. Yes. They are all people-based, all soul-based lessons. Mm -hmm. Everything, um, how do you say basically boils down to that right no matter whether you got in a fender bender on the freeway and have to exchange information with a complete stranger or you're picking somebody up in a bar and having a drink it's all relationship yeah it's all interaction yeah absolutely and the minute you cross and go there you don't have a bar stool you don't have a car you don't have a body but you still have relationships. You do. And personalities. Absolutely. You look at them different, you know. Yes. Um, there's not animosity. There's none of those things over there. It's just love. It's all based on love. So, you know, it's like in this life, if we have like somebody that we've done wrong or they've done us wrong, it's a it's kind of an awkward talk to try and work that out, you yeah. know. There it's not awkward. No. There it's just wow. We you know we went through this together, and that's that's pretty amazing. And here's you know my take, and your take, and there's no arguing in there. You know, right. it's just love. And if we can learn to do that here, then it's it's going to be easier for us to do it there. And it the teaches, next time we have to and visit the next here. Time, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, yep. Yeah, because I imagine you know each life. Yeah, you have a soul family, but you're going to meet a multitude of personalities. Oh, absolutely. And then you're going to have to meet them again on the other side. Well, in all of these interactions, like you just said, you know, even like with a fender bender, all of these interactions are meant to happen in your life for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And like something like that would be, what are you going to do if somebody rear ends you? Are you going to fly off the handle and yell at them? Right. Or are you going to be humble about it and understand that accidents do happen and, you know, whatever and handle it in the way that the universe would want you to handle it that's Mm -hmm. where you know our personalities a lot of times can be different but the universe likes to see us you know what would the universe do pretty much yeah you know and and they definitely god your your loved ones all they wouldn't yell at somebody who accidentally rear-ended them right you know so and sometimes for some people it might be harder with the ones closest to you 
your Absolutely. family, your loved ones. How do you behave there? So it's all tests. It's it's all tests. It's and it's all people based. Yep. And until you pass that test, you keep being faced with that test. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's I think where we a lot of us get frustrated because we're like, Ugh, I learned off of this one, oh, but yeah. you still sometimes have to face it. You know, one more time just to mm-hmm. prove I changed. Right. I'm different now. Right. You know. So. Yep. Yep. Well, yay! Cool. That was good. Awesome. Fantastic. And cool synchronicity on top of all that. That was really neat. Yeah, totally. Next week, we're going to do the five love languages. And I think that this is important because I actually took this quiz already. I'm gonna, uh, I took this, this one, this week's quiz, I took it on a couple of sites because I like to make sure that they are accurate. And this one was. So next week's I'm going to take on a couple of sites too. But there's five different love languages. And what that means is that's the way that people can get through to you the best. Whatever your love language is, there's like acts of service, words of affirmation, you know, gifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember what the other two are, but whatever you know, that's what people can use the most to get through to you. So I think that this is a way to understand ourselves a little bit better too, you know? So that's what we're going to talk about next week. If you're talking love, you're talking my language. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, we, before we say goodbye to our friends, would you like to share your information? Yes. You can find me at Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com. And if you'd like to email us, uh, spiritual Joneses at gmail.com is where you can find us. Very nice. And you, sir. Thank you. Um, for my art, D Jones, collection.com for the web at D Jones, collection for Instagram and Facebook. And for the music, gypsy Brown.com for the web at gypsy Brown music for Instagram at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook. And just again, one more reminder, we are playing October 1st, Agura Hills, California, at the Canyon Club. Doors open at 6. Tickets are on sale. You can purchase them through me, us. You can message us. And we will also have them probably within a week up on a site called Even Bright. Yeah. They are on Ticketmaster. But <clears throat> they are on Ticketmaster, you, but you know, I, you probably I don't pay know. fees and stuff there. So. Well, Even Bright has them too, but I don't think yeah. they will be as high. Probably not as high as so. Ticketmaster, yeah. But, um, but or I'll put the link up as soon as We're selling we them that. for $28 each. Yeah. So. Very good. And it'll be great. Yes. Excited. Looking forward to it. Very so. excited. Well, we hope everybody got something out of this today. That we do. I did. Me and too. it's fun. It's a cool test. Yeah. I thought it was fun. We'll do it again in a couple years and see... For real, if yeah. If things have changed. We should do that. Cool. cool. Yeah. Well, we hope everybody has a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and love.